Welcome back to another edition of Andy's Little Sci-Fi Horror Show. It's my little 10-minute window to the rest of the world. My name's Andy. And I'm Drew. We're here talking more about... Toys! Of course, when we're talking about toys, we're talking about those toys that we grew up with and enjoyed as kids. And we're stupid enough to open because now they'd be worth... Thousands of dollars. College tuition. Mortgage payments. Car payments. College payments for our kids. But that's what happens when you're a kid when you see a toy you want to play with. so cool. Yes, they were. And some of them had play sets, particularly Star Trek. Captain's Log, Stardate 5122-6, on a mission to Gamma 6. Spock, phones. Scotty and I beamed down, not knowing what to expect. We approached the idol. Its jaws were moving. The aliens placed themselves in front of the idol. Strange animals tried to grab us. Bones was trapped in a man-eating plant. Suddenly, the floor gave way. I was in the cave. The Lilliputians were friendly. Mission to Gamma 6. What a success. When it comes to the original Star Trek, the only good ones were the, the eight inches, or the eight inches, or were they ten About inches? eight inches, maybe a little smaller than that. They were about a, sp a little bit bigger than a Star Wars action figures, actually. They needed it. It was at that time in the collector's market where people started getting a little idea about keeping them in the packages. Now, of course, the new action figures had all different types of things, like they had little accessories, or there was something unique about them. Here's a couple of Star Trek commercials from the 1990s. Enjoy. Computer subspace transmission to Starfleet Command from Enterprise. Stardate 45481.4. It's a single blast. Source unknown. Lieutenant Worf checks weapon systems. Captain Picard orders full shields from Lieutenant LaForge in engineering. Suddenly there is an alien presence on the ship. It's one of the Borg, a hostile robotic life form. Commander Riker returns phaser fire. Star Trek, the next generation action figures from plane... Take away his laser pistol, Lobot. You'll pay for this Lando Calrissian. Han Solo and other action figures each sold separately. Out that, check the carbon freezing chamber. Ready, sir. Why did you do it? The Empire tricked me, Han. I had no choice. Prepare for freezing. Long live the Alliance. Goodbye, my friend. Lando Calrissian and Han Solo, Ugnaught, and Lobot action figures each sold separately from Star Wars, the Empire Strikes Back collection from Kenner. Was that Han Solo being put into a solo cup? Let me Not take cool. <laughs> I found a piece. Yes. <laughs> When friends drink too much, even in galaxies far, far away, friends don't let friends drive drunk. Star Trek was one of those that was big in the 70s because it started garnering success. And one of the big Star Trek toys they put out were the communicators. What's contact speed? Check. Ready. Command Communications Console with telescreen and warp drive sound, new from Miko. But the best part is, of course, the Happy Meal tie-ins. 
Presenting McDonald's Star Trek meal. Parents, take a good look. It's the only meal approved for your kids by the United Federation of Planets. Outside, the Enterprise, action, intrigue. Five exciting boxes based on Star Trek, the motion picture. Inside, a regular hamburger, fries, soft drink, a McDonald's and cookie sampler, and a Star Trek prize. Star Trek meal, games, jokes, puzzles. Your kids will love them. McDonald's Star Trek meal. Outside of some hardcore uh, trekkies, I'm sorry, trekkers, who would have known that Happy Meals were around during the first movie? I'll take care of them. Now, of course, Star Trek is well known for coming up with some of the unique ideas that it had, including the communicators. And, of course, when toys needed to be made, they made their own communicator set. I don't remember Spock ever pulling out an antenna like that before. Yeah, that wasn't an antenna. That would, like, reach out and touch somebody. <laughs> it went further than the signal. Oh, the best was the tricorder. I got the tape from Johnny. Get the tricorder. Let's play it. The Star Trek tricorder is a full-function cassette tape player and comes complete with pre-recorded Star Trek adventure. Check the mini readout window. Patrolling outposts. Listen to the voices of your favorite Star Trek heroes or turn the cassette over and press the record button and you can tape your own adventures. Basically what they do is they just take any crappy toy that wouldn't sell and they slap Star Trek on it and they call it Star Trek. They didn't really design it for Star Trek, they just needed something with a license. That's why Star Wars toys out cool at Star Trek. Ten to one. <laughs> one cool thing that the uh, Star Wars toys had that I don't think Star Trek ever did Not really. were collectible cases. Hey. Yeah? How many figures do you got inside of you? Eighteen. Really? How many you got? I don't know. Sounds more like fifteen or so. This is what they had during the Empire Strikes Back. The toys and merchandise was a little bit more upscale than what they originally had. If you had action figures back in the days of Star Wars when it first came out, you had something more like this. From the original Star Wars. Isn't the C-3PO one of these really a lot more rare? They did make a C-3PO, the same version, head and shoulders. And um, the thing is, not very many kids wanted it, which made it more rare when they eventually started to sell out the items. This, however, had the trays. Because back in, the, back in their first movies, they didn't have a whole lot of action figures. What, what a big bust of Darth Vader. You can run around the playground going like, I am your father, Luke. Of course, then they punch you in the face and you fall yeah. over. Ooh, look at that. Cool. I think this guy goes, um, where's this guy go? This is TIE Fighter Pilot, right? He doesn't have a home. Let's get back to the play sets. Fire! Nice job! Imperial Attack Phase. Yeah! Imperial TIE Fighter Millennium Falcon. Snow Speeder has laser guns with sound and light action. Rebel Armored Snow Speeder. Turret and Probot playset from Kenner Star Wars, the Empire Strikes Back collection. Action figures each sold separately. Every movie, Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi, had that one thing that was like the biggie. Mm -hmm. In Empire, it was the uh -uh. In Star Wars, it was pretty much anything you can get your hand on. Uh, but yeah. in Return of the Jedi, it was Ewok Village. Is that an original or is that a... This is all original. Of course, if playsets, action figures, and toys weren't enough t to satisfy that little kid inside you, from the 1980s, there was another alternative. Underoos. In the not-so-distant future on a planet called Earth, it's Underoos. Star Wars Boba Fett is here. That means Darth Vader's always near. C-3PO is lots of style. And R2-D2 just makes me smile. Star Wars Underoos are here, yeah! Something out of sight in underwear. <laughs> Don't be so ridiculous, R2. Underoos are for Earthlings. Now you can take the fun to bed. <laughs> and you don't even have to be a grown-up to do it. That's kind of scary. Uh, the kids that bought those are the kind of kids you see at Boston Comic Con. <laughs> yeah, like us. I, I had Iron it. Man. So that's what went wrong with you. I had Batman too. What? My name's Andy. And I'm Drew. Good night. I don't even want to know anymore. <laughs>